I want to do is I want to carry on with the conversation that we had with many of you to uh, talk a little bit more about rights and responsibilities and where you draw the line and how society draw draws up rules. I brought along my barrister's robes. Some of you probably may have seen some of these before and some of you might not. The people who speak are going to hold the wig. <laughs> if you want, well, if you want to, you can by all means put it on. It's my wig, you, you can put it, it on. No, no this, this wig I got uh, in 1976. What? This is my uniform. This is what I wear every day when I go into court. Then the judge won't hear me and my client won't be represented. The point is, it's a symbol. It's a symbol that says, I'm entitled to speak. John, who's going to come and he's going to talk to us a bit later about his experiences as a prisoner who took the government to the court in Strasbourg and won a ruling that prisoners should uh, get the vote because in our country still prisoners, once you're in prison, you don't have the right to vote. But we're going to talk about that a bit, a bit later. We have Michael as well. And Michael thinks that prisoners shouldn't get the vote and we're going to have them Hiya. debate that. Now, who is going to come and report back about the visit to the Mizzens? I asked you to choose somebody. Emmy. Emmy, you're going to do it. So Emmy, I'm going to give you the wig, but I want to hear a report. Why Emmy look so lost? I promise I won't put you in that side. Okay, now show Emmy some respect. She has the symbol of respect here with her wig. The Mizzens were the family whose son got murdered. We asked them about, like, if, court people should know about the past prisoners like convictions is that right I hope it's right there was a trial and in the trial the Mizzen family heard the evidence of what their son because one of the sons was there when his brother was killed in fact he died in his brother's arms didn't he yeah and they heard the evidence of what they said happened but then the defense for the young man put a completely different story and for the Mizzens it was very painful for them to hear that story and they were concerned because the jury didn't know that the young man who said these things that that their son was the aggressor had convictions and the question really is why is it that we don't let juries generally know that people have convictions Jordell tell me why you why why is it that people don't normally know whether someone who's in front of the jury has been in trouble before or not. If someone don't basically know you, right, or if they've heard stuff about you, they've already had that vision painted in them, that's the type of person you are. So you'll come in there with a clean slate and then basically you make your opinion about me when you meet me for the first time. There's an expression, give a dog a bad name <laughs> and hang him. And essentially that so, just because someone has made a mistake once and done something wrong, the law assumes that unless there's a reason, we should judge them as someone who is innocent until proven guilty. Mm. <laughs> Janique, what do you think about it? If I was on the stand here, yeah, I don't think the jury should know what I've been convicted for before because it will implicate their judgment of me. And if, I'm, if I've been guilty before, but I'm innocent this time, yeah. it will make them think that I'm guilty again. Now, does anyone think that there are circumstances when you should know what the person has done? Yeah, like if it's like murder or something like that, I think that the jury might sh uh, should be told if they've got any like violent related crimes or something like that. So I think what you're saying really is that it depends how relevant the crime is. Who else went to see the Missons? Michael, what did the Missons think about the fact that they knew that the boy who killed their son actually had a, a, a long record and yet he was presented to the jury without those being known. They, they wanted to actually have his history like, like checked and everything to make sure he had, like if he had convictions, yeah, why weren't they brought up in court? Can you remember the particular point that they made? Not, mm -hmm. not fully. I think one of the things that upset the Mizzen so much was that they felt, and indeed the jury in the end found because he was convicted, that the boy was telling lies and he was saying things about their son which didn't happen and they felt that the jury would have been better able to judge that he was telling lies if they knew what sort of person he was. Georgia, you look a bit sceptical if you've got something to say about this. I think they should um, know about every crime, no matter what, um, really, because 
if you do something bad in your past and you, you do know. something again, say you did do it, um, I think the punishment should probably be worse to stop you from doing it again once you get released or once your punishment is over. And if you haven't done it again, then you should be able to trust in the law that they would um, they work make the right decision upon you. But the question is, should we trust the jury to be able to go beyond the fact that you've done it again to judge whether you've done it this time? How can a stranger, like, uh, but, all right, I'm not saying the jury should be like members of your family or anything, <coughs> but do they know like what the person's like and stuff? Yeah, but so no, that's the that point. Good. This is like a blank person making an opinion of you for the first time. And if they find that the opinion they're making is obviously that you're the one in the wrong, yeah. Then, do you but know what I mean? Because none in. of these people know each other. One of the things that, what, that, that the Mizzens yeah. were upset by was that when the defence put their case, their case was basically that Jimmy Mizzen was six foot tall and therefore, of course, he was aggressive. <laughs> so, in other words, what they were saying was they were making the sort of assumptions that Jordell was saying we shouldn't make, but the defence was using them in a way to try and... Um, make the son look bad. In fact, of course, the jury showed the common sense and decided that he was guilty, but until the jury decides, everybody is presumed to be not guilty. Do you think that in Britain, we've got the right balance between the defendant and the victim? You come into the witness box and the jury judge you on what you say and do that day in the witness box. And if you convince them, you win. And if you don't convince them, you lose. Now, who thinks that that is the fairest system? Yeah. Those who think it's the fairest system, can you all go and stand on the right? Let's, let's, let's see. Those of you who think actually you should know more about it, oh, come over here. And those, those who are not sure, can they come in the middle? So I think actually what's interesting here, guys, is we've got people over here who think definitely you should always not. People over here who think you should know everything. And people in the middle who think it depends. And in fact, the law at the moment essentially is in the middle. Jordan is going to sum up why he thinks he's right. I think I am right and our side is right because if you're the person in the wrong, right? And or if you've basically had a past, right? You shouldn't be tagged down by your past. Your past shouldn't haunt you for the rest of your life, right? You're already restricted from going abroad. Right? You should not have that restriction on your life through every, everyday life, do you know what I mean, right? And I feel like people can change. Henry's going to tell us why he thinks it depends on the circumstances. Say, for, for, for petty offences, like... Forget it, you don't need to know the background because that's like... Why not? Huh? Because that's like... But any no, offence... But this is what I'm saying. Yeah, for petty offences, like possession... For like possession, for like possession, criminal damage, stuff like that, yeah, you don't need to know the background for, yeah, because it's... You got arrested for that one thing. You got arrested for that one thing. You got arrested for that one thing. But then for murder and stuff like that, yeah. Not, not like. Think of how many people like will, will like smoke cannabis or possess drugs and all that, yeah. Not everybody like it's a select number of people that will actually go and kill someone, yeah. So it's good to know more about their background. Georgie, you think you should know always. So tell me why. It doesn't matter what the crime you did, is because it builds up a picture of who the person is <coughs> and what they've done in their past. And if, and you're defending them, saying that they shouldn't know anything, but the people shouldn't have done it in the first place if they don't want that on record. Yeah. It's all about learning. And so if you're put in that position, people should know your past and should know what you've done. So you can build up the right idea of you because if you're, the thing is, well, if you're the thing a person, is, is, if, if you if you if you if you whoa, 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 this is what the wig is for. I object. People need to build up a picture of the person, no matter what they've done. And if, if they regret doing that, they have the chance to speak in court. You think, yeah, if you're innocent, you're genuinely innocent, right? Because of your past, they're going to put you into jail for something you didn't do. No, why should you trust the law? Because they've already... How are you going to trust to be, them? The law needs to be fact, not trust. The reason they have 12 people that don't know each other is for them all to make an opinion of you, of their self. If you want to tell somebody, right, about your past, you've got to tell them about every parking ticket, every time you're late for your bill, tell them everything then. You can't be selective, it's either one or the other. So, no, I do, I do agree with you that you don't really need to know their past, because it's, it's not about their past, it's about the crime they're doing now. So if you're going up for a murder charge, it doesn't matter if you've killed 10 people before, 
Well, they don't, because it's all about the evidence that happens now. It doesn't matter if you ain't, you ain't do ever done that. anything before. Say if you, you've been arrested for one thing, yeah? Oh, Who cares what you've done? It doesn't make any difference to the time it is now. It makes no difference at all. If it's linked to it, then yeah. If it's not linked to it, then why bring it up? You don't have to tell but like there are smaller that. things that contribute to the way people's personality are. And it's been proven, like, through psychology and stuff, that all of these things can relate to what you do later on in life. If you was given an opportunity to get a good job, right, even though you had no GCSEs, you're saying the fact of you nearly getting the interview and being able to get the job, you should basically be rejected because you never had the qualifications. Is that what you're saying? Because of the past. That's your past. I wanted to bring in uh, the people we've got with us. So we're going to start, first of all, with John. And John, actually, himself, if he doesn't mind me saying this, is someone who has been convicted of manslaughter and so served as a prisoner. And so, but, and, and whilst he was in prison, obviously he lost many of his rights, the right to go out. And, but what he also did whilst he was in prison is he lost the right to vote. And he felt that was wrong. And he felt it was so wrong that he actually took the government to court. I left school at 16 without any qualifications. I ended up in prison committing different crimes. And then, <laughs> Uh, 79, uh, I got convicted, um, I did a killing, I got convicted of manslaughter. And then 89, uh, the transformation changed, you know, did away with all the violence of the past and the criminality and decided to study the law. And I suddenly come across this quote that's saying that there was no votes in prison. So the first thing I did was ask why couldn't find any reason why they, they was uh, denied the vote. So I decided to challenge it. I lost the case in this country, uh, even though they brought the Human Rights Act in, and uh, I took the case to Europe, which you can do. So I won the case, uh, the first instance, <coughs> in the chamber in Europe. Uh, the government didn't like the result and appealed against it. They lost the appeal, so I actually won at the Grand Chamber. But for the last five years, the previous administration and the present administration are not changing the law, even though the highest court in Europe has decided that all convicted prisoners are entitled to the vote. I've got Michael here. He disagrees with John, and he wants to put his side to the case, so I'll give him the wig, and then I'm going to throw it open to all of you to ask questions and to discuss this issue. I've, I've got involved in politics, the party I'm in is UKIP, I've been on uh, in question time. I, I like speaking to young people about these things. So basically I'm here today just to speak to you about why I think prisoners shouldn't get the vote. And basically um, one of the main things is that there's a difference in my view between a human right and a civic right. So a human right is basically, you know, you can't, you can't be persecuted or beaten up by people. No, that's, that's not right, that's never right, that's your human right. But I think there's something called a civic right, which is when you live in a country, you adhere to what the government says and what the society is. Like in some countries, you, can, you can't get divorced. In some countries, you know, you can have loads of wives and things like that. And then in this country, you, if you're a prisoner, you don't get the vote. In some countries, you do. But this, is, but this is to be decided by our government. Now, what John's talking about is this European court. And basically, this is made of 47 judges from all over Europe. And basically, they have decided that our government should let prisoners vote. Now, my argument is very simple, is that I think with rights <coughs> comes responsibilities. Now, if you want to be... If you want to break the law, uh, uh, there's got to be... There's got to be a punishment for that, and that's going to prison. And when you go to prison, there's certain things you can't do. You can't walk around, you can't, you know, in the outside world, you can't meet with the people you want to meet, you can't, and, you know, you can't vote. And I think that's good and right. Once you've come out, once you've paid your debt, then you get the vote back, right? Asia has a civic, so let's have her to say something. I don't understand why everybody, like, the countries in Europe are, like, um, telling Britain to, um, get the vote for prisoners. They ha it has nothing to do with them, not really. Like, if, Brit if Britain <coughs> wants to, like, get a law where prisoners can't vote, then that's their right. I personally agree with John, yeah, because prisoners, yeah, when they're in prison, yeah, the, the, the government that will be put in power or whatever, yeah, affects the prisoners and the prisons as well. So they should be able to have a right to say, like, who they want to be to have in charge of the prison. If you are big enough to do a crime or go into prison, then you shouldn't have the choice in what your punishment is. Yeah. It, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to affect the way, you know what I mean? You shouldn't be able to affect <coughs> them because you're 
you're being punished. That's what it's all about. Why do you think you deserve the privilege to yeah. be able to vote? The government argued that position. They said uh, in the court case that voting isn't a right, it's a privilege. I, I, I said it wasn't. I said it, it's a human right and it, it comes under Article 3 of Protocol 1 of the Convention. And the court Which, the agreed way, with me. Yeah. <laughs> and they said it is actually a human right. If you have someone turning around and say, oh, you can't have the, uh, the vote, what you've got is politicians choosing the electorate. And it's up to the electorate to choose the politicians, not the other way around. Theoretically, if he's took someone else's life, hasn't he took someone else's vote? So, yeah. so why does he get their vote in place of them? Yeah, that's a very good point. If you agree, if you agree with John, stay on this side. If you don't, please move over to that yeah, side. Yeah, go on. Let's, it's be interesting go on. to see. If you don't agree with John, please move over to that side. Oh, let's, let's have a look. That's good. OK, so we get a bit of an idea. <laughs> I agree with John because I feel that if, if you know what's going on in the outside world and a party is coming into power and you agree with everything they say, and you feel that they're right for you, they could possibly stop you offending in the future. Because oh. the, I, think the, I think the reason people offend is because they don't agree with some, like, some government rules oh. and society. Oh. No, you don't have to listen to me, because oh. I listen to you, Islam. Okay, guys, guys, hey, hey. All right, the reason I agree with John is because there's a difference between a privilege and a right, and it, it yeah. is a human right to be able to vote. Even if you have done something wrong, you should still be able, you're still a human after all. And yes, yeah, there's always the consequences that, you know, they've done wrong, you know, and someone will be, you know, if they've hurt someone's family, why should they be able to take their vote? But at the end of the day, they're still a human. And if they've realised they've done wrong, that's even better. The minimum time that um, a party can be in power, yeah, is four years, yeah? Five, five, five years, years, whatever, yeah? So that's the minimum. What about the people that are in there for like a year or that, yeah? Huh? Yeah, they shouldn't have gone in there, but what about when they come out, when they, they come out, what, they, they, they want to have a choice of what government they come out into. One well, about Andy's point, and then about Henry's point, one of your point, I think that is absolutely, like, just absolutely, completely and utterly rubbish, that you think the way the government run could affect the way people go out and do stuff. I think when you go out and commit a crime, it's your own personal choice. Nobody makes you do it, nobody tells you to do it. Yeah. People might be egging you on, but that's your own fault. It's your own personal choice to go out and commit a crime. And on Henry's point, you're just wrong, mate. I shall, I shall. They get, they actually do get a lot in prison. They actually do get an education in prison. You can actually study law, you can study English. When you go into prison, yeah, I say, yeah, you're allowed, you should end up having the right year to vote, yeah? No matter what things you have done in your past, yeah, even if you're still in prison, yeah, yeah. you should still have the right to vote. Yeah. You are allowed to actually be able to speak your opinion yeah. and let your opinion yeah. actually yeah. count. Yeah. While you're still living and breathing, yeah. that you still count for that one vote. That's John's point. All right. So you've got a another one. Vote, a yeah. simple vote, a simple vote. Yell in there because you're not a civilised person. I'm, I'm not going to kill <laughs> someone and call you're myself a, a civilian. <laughs> Civil, like, it's like yeah. civilian, isn't it? And they're in there because they're not. They're going around killing people, raping they're little kids, community. and you expect them to be able to vote for the government. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Please don't start talking. You're not going to win your hands. Yeah, you're going to win your hands. Yeah. What you're talking about here is the human rights that we've got and we had to fight for. We got them. You took someone's human rights away from No, them. hold on. Okay, guys. Yeah. He hasn't finished talking. All right. He respects well, tell me, tell me how many human rights the last government took away with the illegal Iraq war. Tell me that. And George Bush. Tell me, tell me how many human rights. It isn't irrelevant. It's the issue. No. And this is this is why. This is why. Made things happen. That doesn't make it better. He took one person's yeah. right away. Yeah. Look how many people he's trying to get to have rights now. He's trying to get all the prisoners in this country to have rights now. He took one person's right away. That is crime, and that. Excuse me. Come on. A civil Please citizen. Excuse me. Come on. Come on. Excuse me. A citizen. Yeah. They have to pay. All these bills in prison. What bills do you have to pay? No, I have to live life. That's a luxury. Yeah. We have to pay. Hold on. 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 I'm not disputing there's an issue with people who commit crime. They go through the courts and get punished. It's a separate issue. What you're talking about here is purely the human rights that that person gets because he's human. Are you not restricted in, in prison already? Are you not restricted? Yeah, this, this is the same. What they said in the court, and they actually <coughs> listed it down, they said, what you lose when you go into prison, all you use is your liberty. Now, until you've been in prison, you don't know what liberty is until you've lost it. You know, it's not going down to the pub, not getting a pint. 
not doing the things that you that's want to do, you've been told. Well, this, yes, yeah, well, this is it. But, that's but the funny, well, that's, that's, yeah, I'm not complaining class, about class, that. Class, but that's what you class, lose, is the liberty. Really that's all you lose. Okay, what you've got other people to try to do is remove other rights that you don't lose. When you can't go where you want to go, when you want to go and the rest of it, that is what you're losing and that's what people forget. The rights that I'm really concerned about are the rights of the victims and of the British public at large. And like, obviously, I know some of you aren't 18 yet, but when you're 18, you get to vote for a government, right? Now, your government should decide whether prisoners get the vote or not. It should not be done in a court. If you, wanna, if you believe that prisoners uh, should have the vote, you should vote for, it, vote for a, a politician who's going to implement that and a government and a prime minister. Exactly. And if you disagree with it, you should vote against, uh, for a party that disagrees with it. That's how it should work. That's, uh, it's democracy. Yeah. What John's doing is basically trying to fight the UK government, which is basically the elected representatives of the people and that's the that's why it's fundamentally wrong because people in this country mostly don't want prisoners to have the vote because they see well we're already paying for these people to be in prison and everything exactly. why should they get the vote why should they get a say they can have a say when they get out and they're contributing to the money pot of how run of the, the run to country again yeah, because in, in prison you don't pay for taxes you don't pay for nothing all the bills my parents have to pay is to keep you in there for you still to decide who governs us do you know what i mean you referred to saying that they still, you still get some rights, but in prison, um, such as education, things like that, but you don't you get to go to the pub and you get to take away m more of the basics that make daily life worth living. Um, so if you're going upon that point, wouldn't it be fair to take away all of their privileges, including education and everything else, to make it a fair system? Or are you saying that we're allowed privileges, but there are better things in life such as voting when it doesn't even out. You can have a system where you take everything away from them, which is what used to happen in this country. They gave them basically nothing. Or you can get a system where you suddenly become more civilised. Now, Winston Churchill in 1910, he said you can judge how civilised a society is by how you treat their prisoners. And this country treats prisoners very badly, which yeah. means that the society no, is actually no, uncivilized. No, no. Churchill didn't support this. Churchill didn't vote. Right, fundamentally, I just believe it's it's wrong to give uh, people in prison a vote. They should get the vote after they've come out, and that will, you know, show that if you're out, you get certain privileges that you don't get when you're in prison. <coughs> and the whole thing is about again, I stress it is that our government doesn't want to bring this in. This is being pressed by European courts. And there's even going to be something now where the European courts are saying, because our government didn't bring this in for the general election, every prisoner is going to be able to sue our government for £750. Oh, right? Wow. And that's taxpayers' money, £50 million. Pounds. And that's, that's the court, that's the court that John supports. So... I explained earlier on where they said that you only lose the liberty. The court then outlined which rights prisoners retain. Then it got down to this point. There is therefore no question that a prisoner forfeits his convention rights merely because of his status as a, as a person detained following conviction. Nor is there any place under the convention system where tolerance and broad-mindedness are the acknowledged hallmarks of the dem democratic society for automatic disenfranchisement based purely on what might offend public opinion. Okay, so that's where we leave it. We actually have a, a majority for the people who think the prisoners shouldn't have a right, but there's a significant minority who think they do. So this is an issue that's not got a right or wrong answer. Thank you, by the way, all of you. Thank you to John and to Michael for coming.